If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Tuesday, January 15th, 2013. I'm your host, Tiffany Elias. Our guest in the Finis Monitor is Alex Rodriguez, the men's and women's water polo coach at Pomona Pitzer, a Division III college in Claremont, California. Later this week, Rodriguez will be honored with the USA Water Polo's 2012 Distinguished Coaching Award that will be given out at the USA Water Polo National Awards Dinner this Saturday. Alex is joining us from Claremont today. Alex, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. First off, congratulations on a great award. How does that feel being honored with the Distinguished Coaching Award this year? Um, to be honest, it was very shocking. I wasn't expecting it. Um, I'm very humbled uh, by the award. I think there's a lot of great candidates out there. And um, I, feel, I feel very fortunate. It made me really think about my life and how I've gone to where I've at and how many people I have around me that care and help contribute to everything I try to do. I'm glad you mentioned that, how you've gotten to where you are, because we want to know a little bit more about your background in uh, water polo coaching. If you could give us a little insight onto how you've gotten to where you are today, that would be great. Um, it's pretty easy. I was actually a swimmer uh, growing up and I went to a high school that didn't have a swim team. My parents and another group of uh, parents really wanted a swim team at Benita High School here in Laverne, and they went out and tried to find a swim coach for the program. Uh, so my sophomore, my freshman year, we started swimming at Benita High School. We got a swim coach who happened to be a water polo coach as well. So halfway through swim season, he, uh, he put a, a program together to start water polo in the fall and I made the transition. I also played a little bit of basketball, so I made the transition to water polo, and then after water polo started, um, that was it. I was in love. Uh, you know, I, was, I wasn't a great swimmer, but I had a good swimming background, and um, you know, with my basketball skills, water polo kind of came natural. Played in high school. I actually went to a junior college, Citrus College, for two years, um, where I, I did pretty well. We uh, came third in states uh, my sophomore year, and then I transferred to Pepperdine University, where my senior year I was part of the uh, national championship team. Actually, the last uh, team, not Pac-10 or Pac-12 now, to win a national championship in sports uh, men's water polo. Wow, that's great. So you, you have quite the background. It's interesting. So you did start off as a swimmer. How much would you say that swimming has been a factor in your current water polo players today? Uh, swimming is huge to our sport, and and also I actually run a, a club water polo program now, which we totally emphasize swimming. So I can't imagine my water polo career without swimming. Um, I swam since I was like six years old. I did all the all the meets. Um, I swam in uh, several uh, U.S. club uh, programs, and I swam in high school, and I swam in junior college. And Pepperdine doesn't have a men's water, uh, swim team, or I probably would have swam there as well. Um, swimming is huge especially the rules recently have changed to uh to try to make the game a little bit more of a, a counter attack up and down game um so if you can't swim it's going to be hard for you to play at a high level here can, and with, go ahead can you describe that rule that that you're referring to that's changed the water polo sport into a little more depth um they've cut the shot clock down um they um there's another rule the, the shot blocking so if uh, if you're a defensive player and you shot block a shot, it actually turns over the ball. You shot block the shot out of bounds. It used to be that the team that last touched the ball uh, would uh, lose, would not have possession. And now defensively, if you shot block a shot, um, it considers a basically a turnover and you can just take off on a, on a counterattack. And that's increased the, the percentage of uh, possessions in a game a couple more. So you can basically get maybe two or three more possessions a game 
uh, just because a shot block, instead of resetting the shot clock and the team maintaining possession, you get in, you can take off on counterattack. Um, a lot of the, the bigger teams, uh, you know, swim a lot. The five meter foul, I believe, um, a direct shot has changed like two meter play. So the bigger, bulky guys playing center is not as important anymore. You have a lot more longer, more posting up, more, more different looks in water polo than it was maybe 10 or 12 years ago. Wow, well that would definitely have an impact on the sport. With that, I'd like to talk about your training here in just a little bit. Let's start off with the guys as they just finished their season. And a little bit of a rough start to your season this year. You started with 11 straight losses, but an incredible second half of the season, if you will, came back to finish with a 16-16 record. What were your overall thoughts on uh, the 2012 season? Well, th this was pretty much my best team I've uh, ever um, had here at Pomona Pizza. So we were deeper, we were a little bit bigger, we were a little bit more athletic. Um, you know, one of the negatives, or not negatives, uh, we're a Division three program playing in a basically kind of a Division one world. There's only 40 men's teams. So to find competition, we play interdivision all the time. So of those, I think of those 11 first losses, they're all against Division one teams or NAIA schools. Um, which is just great competition. Like our first game of the season this year is uh, SC or UCLA. I, I can't remember which one. Both of them are training year round. Both of them have national type level players. And honestly, that's our second week of training. Uh, we're only we're limited training. My team cannot train with me in the summertime. They cannot train uh, much in the spring. We've got about four or five weeks with uh, two hours practices maximum, three practices a week maximum. So it doesn't really give us a lot of time. Um, the gist of our schools is for the kids to be students first, athletes second. So the restrictions on the training allow the kids to basically have a, a social life and a student life in their off season where, you know, a Division One program, they're training all spring on the men's side and on, in the fall for the women's side. And then on the men, they really train a lot in the summer. Uh, basically all the top programs are staying together and just training throughout the summer together. So uh, what, what I've done in the past, because sometimes I get kids who don't have the most experiences, play a lot of games. I don't really care about the wins and losses. I don't care. I want to play the best teams. And, uh, and my kids uh, step up to the challenge, too. They, they love it. We went in a weekend where we played two conference opponents who are you know, not as competitive. And uh, my kids were, were talking about how much more they enjoyed you know, basically getting their butts kicked by USC, UCLA. And that, that experience and that, like, they feel more accomplished when uh, they get to play a higher, better team. And even, even if they don't win, um, they feel like they're competing against the best and, uh, and learning from it as well. So, Wow, that's really interesting. Now, would you be able to, to arrange your schedule so that you could play some of those bigger teams a little bit later in the season? Perhaps not start off with USC, but get a couple games under your belt before you take on those big hitters? Um, it's, it's just difficult because we're, you know, the, we play with dates. So we only, in the past, we've only been playing with 20 dates. So we can only play 20 days of the season. And most of our, our conference takes up, like our conference games and tournament take up about 11 of those dates. So, um, you know, I would love to be able to scoot some of those uh, better teams back. Um, but uh, it just becomes a, a you know, Later in the season, we really care about not, not uh, losing games. So, for example, we play in uh, Claremont McKenna, uh, which is our rival kind of school-wise, or our Redlands, who has been a kind of a rival with us conference-wise. Um, we really try to prep for those games, and it, it'd be hard to kind of play a, a UCLA right before them um, in that regard. And, and sometimes the emotions that it takes to play one of our conference games um, wouldn't allow us to play a, a competitive game against uh, a USC UCLA. You know, we struggle. <laughs> we struggle with everything, even to keep it competitive with them in the first place. So, right. uh, yeah, and then and then plus because our sport's so small, we're in the WWPA conference as well. So we're actually almost in two conferences. Uh, the Sky Conference, which we participate, does not currently have an NCAA uh, automatic bid. So we go after our conference tournament to our WWPA tournament that has LMU, UC, San Diego, Air Force, Santa Clara. So we have to mix in those games as well 
and, and you know, I those are again names that really help us in seeding for the WWPA tournament. So we I try to keep those in the back as well. Now that's different than your women's schedule, correct? Because yes. they can make it to the NCAA's. Yes, my women's team, uh, because there's more women's uh, collegiate uh, teams. We have around 61 uh, water polo teams, uh, women's water polo. I mean, college is playing women's water polo. Uh, there is a bigger tournament. So the women's tournament is eight teams, and the men's tournament is only teams. And um, so there's more automatic bids. So in the women's side, Big West has a bid. Uh, MAC, Back East has a bid. Obviously, CWPA still has a bid. We have a bid. Um, someone, uh, uh, Mount Pacific, how can I forget them, have a bid. And um, so I think in that case, there's six automatic bids on the women's side and only two uh, at large bids. On the men's side, there's three automatic bids and only one at large. And the three are just WWPA, uh, Mount Pacific's, which is all the D1 teams, and then CWPA is basically the East Coast uh, programs. Wow, that's interesting. So let's talk about your women now. I thought when we started off this interview and you were very humbled to receive the Distinguished Coach Award, interesting because you were actually the Women's Division Three Coach of the Year last year. So you have quite the buildup uh, leading up to this year. The women are just about to kick off their season. They start, I believe the end of January is their first match. How's the outlook on the women's side this year? Oh, it's good. I uh, Last year, two years we had a rough patch uh, where we had limited numbers of girls, um, and then um, we brought in a really good freshman group last year, and uh, that kind of boosted us back up. In my seven years uh, before on the girls' side, I've been in the championship game of our tournament heaven. So uh, bringing this freshman group in, it was uh, kind of a, a headache. Uh, if you knew me as a coach, I'm structured, and I like things that happen kind of like on a two. But bringing in all these freshmen, and basically in our Sky Championship game, we had, uh, I think, five freshmen out there, or four, four all at the same time in the overtime period. And sometimes freshmen like to go wherever they want to go. Um, so I'm excited about this year, just them having an understanding of me a little bit better, me having an understanding of them. Um, we lost two great uh, seniors, uh, one Sky player year, Annie Oxborough Yankees. And uh, Perry Hopkins, our two-man defender, but we brought in a couple of good freshmen, and I just think just being a little, a little older is uh, is going to be exciting. I have a pretty good uh, coaching staff as well. Uh, Tamara Prey, who was a former Princeton McCown, who uh, played at University of Laverne, and Taya Yosef, who uh, played at San Bernardino. So um, I really rely a lot of my assistants to help out and um, and coach the team and and prepare us for games. Well, Alex, sounds like there's a lot to look forward to this year. Thank you for giving us the insight into Pomona Water Polo. Congrats on your awards, and good luck with the upcoming women's season. Yeah, thank you very much for having me, uh, and uh, I appreciate the award and all the, the kindness I've been getting, so thank you. Great. Thanks, Alex. Goodbye. Okay, bye. That is Alex Rodriguez in the Finice Monitor. That will conclude today's morning swim show. Make sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with all the latest news. I'm your host, Tiffany Elias. Thanks for watching.